So here's the uh, kind of tentacle ropey setup that I mentioned that we'll look at. So just to go over what this does before we jump into this too much, uh, basically what I have is I've got a bunch of these uh, locators that control the shape of this uh, mesh. And to do that, I basically have these different uh, locators that I just call my controls. They basically drive this cylinder, which is skinned, and it's basically skinned to these joints. Now, these joints are driven by a bunch of locators, just by a normal parent constraint. These locators instead, like in their turn, is driven by a motion path. A motion path basically allows you to connect a, a transform onto a curve if, if you're not familiar with that already. So that's basically how these are being uh, added to the, the curve here. Now, one thing to know is that if I, okay, I'm going to get rid of that. If we look at the original curve shape that we have here, we're actually getting like a fixed length setup going on with our tentacle so that when we move this around, it keeps its, uh, its shape, its length. Now to do that, what I've done is on the motion path, you basically have your U value. That is the position along the curve that you want to place this uh, transform. So I'm just going to break the connection here. So if I set this to zero, it's going to be at the beginning of the curve. If I set it to one, it's going to be at the end of the curve, 0.5 at the middle of the curve and so on. So basically what I have here is I've got like a little um, kind of setup to calculate the changed value based off the, the, the length change of the curve. So let's just graph one of these and I'll just jump in here real quick now. So the main thing to really focus on is these things here. So what's really happening here is that we, we take out our curve, we get the info of the curve. The curve info basically returns the length of the current curve. Now I pass that into a multiply divide node where I have at the, the input one, so the first argument is basically the original length of the curve. And then the input two is the current length of the curve. So I divide those and that basically provides me with a scale value. So for each of the locators, I have one of these uh, multiplies where basically the input one is the scale value of the curve and the input to is the original position that I wanted them to have along that curve. So as the curve goes grows larger, this uh, scale value will become smaller, therefore scaling the position. So if you imagine that the curve grew to two times its size, to be able to have the tentacle at its same length, we would basically have to scale down those positions by half. So that's basically what's happening here. We would then have one divided by two, which is going to be 0 0.5 or half. And that's the calculations that we're doing here. So if I just jump back here, you can see that we can even go in here. And if I change this, we can change the length of the tentacle that we actually want. So you could add this as an attribute where you could say, you know, I you want the animators to allow controls for, for this. I find this a very nice and kind of uh, useful setup uh, at least. So that's just the kind of the, the main things that's going on here with how these are placed. Now there's a couple of more things that's going on here as well. We have, of course, all the clusters that's actually driving the curve. And we have a secondary curve here, which is called rebuild. Now, all that's happening here is that it's getting a blend shape from this primary curve into this curve so that they match exactly shape. And then I've added in a rebuild curve node here. 
And I've set the rebuild to curvature just so that it matches the curvature of the incoming curve. But I wanted to rebuild the range. So like the kind of positions along the curve to between zero and one uniformly. So that if I have the distance along the curve between zero and 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 is always going to be the same distance. Because if you don't do this, you might get into times where different points on the curve might have different lengths in between them. So there's, it's not too necessary to actually understand specifically what's going on here. The main idea is that we just have a bunch of different curves, uh, sorry, a bunch of different objects that are that is kind of transforming data here. And I think there's too much stuff here. This is, like I mentioned, this is probably how I would rig before. We would have a lot of things, a lot more visual, um, while now I would like to get rid of a lot of these things. I would probably rig it up like this just to make sure and debug things originally, uh, but then afterwards I would probably try and get rid of these things and kind of streamline it a bit more. So let's have a look at how we can actually do that. 